Hi, this is Shadi and today we're going to be talking about training and it is very crucial and a staple in today's training age and competition in order to have an advantage training on the side whether it is calisthenics, bodybuilding or just strength training. It is imperative that we train and condition our bodies in order to keep up with the type of training that we do which is grappling and which is already very taxing on the body so uh, i've been looking up some of the old masters and how they had trained um keep in mind this is the internet we take everything with a grain of salt but uh, nonetheless it does give us some type of insight of what they had tried to do in the past and this is according to um witnesses or people that had trained with them specifically kimura in this uh, video so we're gonna discuss his training routine that uh, i found on bjjee a magazine which by the way they credited uh, my mongolian judo video and i'm very appreciative of that so today we're gonna take a look at masahiko kimura arguably the biggest legend in judo history uh, and see his training routine and what type of training he had gone under under his uh, instructor Tatsukuma Yoshijima which I did a video on uh, several months back and also I did a uh, video on Masahiko Kimura's life altogether but today specifically we're gonna see the training that he had done on the side not just his judo training and the drills and the routine that he had gone on or followed was getting swole as a grappler by Gordon Ryan. How Gordon Ryan went from 160 to 232 in 18 months. Now, obviously I was joking, but regardless, um, this is uh, the uh, training routine that I found on BJJEE. It says 1000 push-ups. Uh, bunny hops or like squat jumps forward for one kilometer headstands three sets of three minutes against a wall uh, judo practice 100 nagekomi one arm barbell snatch or lift a uh, press kind of like what you do with the kettlebell uh, he would do 15 reps on each side uh, for three sets of three or two and one rep which is not bad and completely logical 200 sit-ups uh, of a partner's back or decline sit-ups also very logical 200 squats with a barbell uh, with 200 pounds seems a bit far-fetched in my opinion you have your judo practice 100 drills of submissions also very plausible uh, you have also 100 shuto or 500 shuto which is like a karate drill if i'm not mistaken you have 100 practice uh, or 100 repetition of entries in judo like uh, uchikomi and you have also uh, an unlimited amount of sparring three minutes each round with a different partner you have also the uh, uchimata against a tree and also the osotogari that we talked about drilling it on a tree as well and also an additional practice for one hour now uh, it says that he used to do this for six days a week uh, is it plausible maybe there is however some exercises that can clearly uh, be overdone and overtraining is a real thing and recovery is tough uh, especially if you're uh, training in grappling which is going to hinder a lot uh, your recovery and also your progress in the dojo not just in the gym and that is you know the squats 200 squats that's almost 100 kilograms he would do that for uh, 200 reps which is a bit far-fetched in my opinion you also have the bunny hop for one kilometer which will also really fry your quads so maybe you can do this for once a week and then later on you play with the uh, intensity of your workout that's also a thing we do like for example the dup method the daily undulating periodization where you whenever whatever training you uh, achieve or you uh, try to do each time you go for a different reps and sets so here's the thing a drilling for judo for example uh, explosive entries or explosive throws you can do that every single day this is cardio and also you are uh, 
giving the habit or the muscle memory for your body in order to uh, throw and it kind of it's gonna be effortless during combat and that's fine but i'm talking about the stuff that can tear down the muscles and also really affect the joints and that's heavy lifting heavy lifting is a big thing and you need to know your ranges and one rep maxes i have done it all ever since 2014 i have tried every rep range every set uh, or every program there is and i found that staying between the 70 percent up until your 85 percent of your one rep max in my opinion it's the healthiest for recovery when it comes to muscles joints and also if you are a drug free, free lifter and that's very important um, because when I tried for example powerlifting between the 1 and the 5 repetition range your joints will take a beating couple that with grappling like uh, nogi grappling, judo, bjj or whatever you're gonna take a hit and your muscles first of all will atrophy and also your joints will last far less than you ever want them to be and hence you know the problems like discs etc especially if you play a lot of guard lifting heavy especially deadlifting and squatting for your back uh, i i would say stay in the range of six to ten repetitions now if you go and search something like heavy duty training by mike menzer uh, he would train in the following uh, method and i have found it to be the best at least for me i know uh, each and every one of you has his own method, his or her method, uh, that works for them. But to me, it's uh, above the 70% uh, of your one rep max. But you stay in the range of six to eight reps. He would do one to two warm up set and just one activation set, say bench press. You do six to eight reps and it's till failure. Till failure, you go one set and you go all out. You couple it with, say, uh, machine flies or something. Say we're doing chest. Uh, it's going to be f more than enough for your chest. Uh, and, you know, you can just uh, write your own workout, see the exercises that work for you. But it's mainly uh, each exercise is you do warm-up set and then you follow it with one activation set. Uh, six to eight reps uh, above the 70 percent range but uh, below the 90 percent of your one rep max which will first of all preserve your joints it's not as taxing on your joints as doing say like a power lifting program and also one set it's easy to recover from one set and you're gonna constantly add a little bit of weight doing progressive overload in order to gain strength and muscle but at the same time preserving your joints but you cannot do that in the power lifting range of one to five reps and also staying more than an hour and a half because you have to rest between sets two and three minutes uh, with the heavy duty training uh, you can finish your workout and i'm not even joking in 30 minutes this is including stretching at the end uh, each muscle only needs like one or two exercises and that's it you can do say two full body workouts a week or uh, push pull legs three times a week uh, and it's gonna be very easy to recover from you're not gonna be sore the next day uh, being sore is not a good thing a lot of people think that you did the damage which is good and I am very well against that after six years of being in the gym I found out that being sore is never a good thing uh, even Firaz Zahabi uh, the uh, MM, head MMA coach he talks about never being sore because you also have to grapple you have to wrestle you have to you know keep your joints healthy etc you need to recover from all of this you know even if you don't lift and you roll and very hard you wake up the next day you can't even walk so imagine if you put the stress of lifting heavy on top of it he says just do uh, between the 70 and 90 percent uh, range of your one rep max if I'm not mistaken and one set and go to failure all out uh, another thing you can do if you don't want to lift heavy at the gym you can always do uh, calisthenics calisthenics is also very good for your strength your core stability uh, you can progressively uh, make the exercises harder for example the chin-up it can become like a one-arm chin-up with uh, multiple variations the push-ups can be feet elevated push-ups until you can do it with one arm for three reps uh, 
every exercise can be uh, evolved even in body weight exercises and it will keep your joints very very healthy which is something you need in order to have a lengthy uh, grappling career not just in competition but you know you basically want to train until very old age this is the goal this is the ideal um, so in short uh, you know you can never know if it's 100% or not what what it's written on the internet especially the kimura training routine uh, mas oyama stated that this is what he trained under uh, tatsukuma yushijima but uh, then again uh, you know he might have uh, the ju the judo drill seems very likely and logical i'm not saying it's not it's good cardio and it's uh, not as taxing as the the lifting heavy like the snatches and the squats and the bunny hops and the bench pressing uh, you need to take a break for them to so these muscles can recover especially if you're drug free uh, Masahiko Kimura there's no need to say that uh, he took steroids because back in his era even before the 1950s only the soldiers in the world war were taking uh, something and uh, when it, they came like a bit mainstream it was already in the 60s so uh, by then Kimura was already done with his uh, competitive career as a judoka and as a professional wrestler almost uh, he was already on his way out so i don't believe that he ever took any anything excuse excuse me but um, uh, other than that he needs to recover you uh, you know overtraining is a real phenomenon i don't care how savage you are or if you can beat Elio Gracie, etc. Overtraining is still a thing. And uh, he probably did this probably once a week. And on the other days, you know, he lifted a bit lighter or something like that. But in my opinion, in my experience, the two things you can do as a grappler, because you already have such a big priority on the mats, you can do the heavy duty training by Mike Menzer, uh, where you do just one activation set and you go all out and you don't feel sore the next day. Um, and you can recover very well and it keeps your joints healthy and the other thing you can do is calisthenics body weight training that will also uh, increase your strength your core strength and also um, it will keep you healthy uh, and relatively risk-free from injuries so uh, what kind of training program do you do uh, I tried it all but this is what works for me the heavy duty training uh, with a little bit of body weight here and there uh, what does work for you let me know down below and if you have another opinion also share it down below this was Shady and thank you for listening